Hey guys, I've got something really, really cool to show you uh, today. Uh, I'm going to show you how I added AI powered texture generator into our new editor. Um, and let's just try it out. Go to scripting and then open AI. And we have this text to image option. And we can enter uh, our input description and we can select the um, size we want and then this is just a field for our API where I pasted my API key. So let's try it out. Press the generate button. And it's always interesting to see what you get. It's a little bit addictive. It's like gambling. Oh, I like this one. Cool. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. I mean, it's a little jagged here, but I mean, I could clean this up and uh, fix the seams and everything. It's totally usable. Save changes, eh, no, you can always get another one. Let's try it again. So it tends to do uh, the best you tend to get the best results uh, for stuff that has sort of a uniform distribution of detail. So like concrete, uh, this one's not so good. Okay, I don't like this one. Uh, concrete and plaster and you know any kind of uh, base material, it does really well. Where it tends to uh, not do as well is when you have a lot of geometric details because the AI just has no understanding. Now it's giving me a lot of you know, these weird tiles, which I don't really like. It doesn't really have any understanding of um, of the purpose of structures. And so it just kind of throws things together without making sense. Uh, but for base textures, it's actually like totally usable. This is not bad. Let's see what we get one more time. Oh, it's actually pretty cool. I like this one. That one's not bad. I'll come back to it later. It's actually being saved uh, in a temporary folder so I can still get it. So how is this actually implemented? This is all done uh, with a Lua extension. This is not a feature that's written into the editor source code. Um, and I will show you the extension that does this. Here it is. So what it does is uh, first you declare this table and then uh, we're going to load this module. Now this is a DLL. This is where most of the important code is. And the script is going to create a menu that's this menu item here and it calls listen event and so when that menu is activated it calls this hook function which is declared up here and this evaluates all our this handles all of our uh, events that we want it to and then it's going to create this tool window and this is just creating the interface blah 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 and then we have three more calls, two more calls for listen event. So we're listening for when that button is pressed and also for the wind, when the window is closed. So when that happens, when this event hook function is called, okay, if the window is closed and if it's this window, which it's going to be because this only gets triggered um, when we specifically, you know, under the circumstances uh, that we tell it to be triggered, um, then it's going to hide that window and it's going to activate the main program window. Okay. If the menu item is activated, then it's going to show the window, set hidden false, and it's going to activate this window. Okay. So close it. That script just got called. Uh, activate it and that other fun the function just got called again this is all happening in script okay 
Now we here we uh, when that button is pressed, here we check for the API key. We make sure that it's that it's present, and it's it's hidden because of the style of the text field. But that value is still retrievable. And then we set we send that API key to the OpenAI DLL, and then we're going to get some properties from the uh, from the uh, user interface. Okay, this is very, very cool. Uh, right here, what we're doing is we're saving the current settings into the program settings. And then when the program quits, it's going to save these settings into a JSON file. This is done using an implementation of Lua tables in C++. It's like a, it's a new uh, C++ container I created that acts in a manner similar to like other STL containers, but it acts like a Lua uh, table and it's accessible from Lua. And that's what this program settings thing is. So that's actually not a, a Lua table. It's actually a C++ structure and C++, that's why it's user data. That's why the type is user data. So C++ and Lua can access the same thing at the same time very easily. So you don't have to pass all this data back and forth uh, in between Lua and C++. Otherwise it would be this big conflicting thing because it's like you would have one uh, set of settings for Lua and then another set of settings, maybe a JSON object in C++. And this way it's all just unified in one structure. Uh, so kind of boring, but it actually like makes a lot of makes a big difference because you can easily do stuff like this program extensions prompt okay we're just setting the prompt to be uh where did this come from this is the contents of this text field so here's the prompt here's the code that gets it here's the line of code that sets it in the settings and then when that when the program close, closes, this settings file is a JSON file. This contains all the settings. Okay. Now in this extension section, we have open AI prompt. Oh, what is this? This is what are uh, the prompt that I used last time, which was for some haunted house thing. This is the size that I used last time. So this is how a Lua extension easily adds extra information into the program settings. This is very, very cool. Okay, now this is the, okay, new image. This is the hardcore C++ DLL uh, function call that actually gets the image from the server. And then after that, we're just doing, loading it up and displaying it in the editor. But this is, All available here. Ultra Engine, Lua. This is our build of Lua for Ultra Engine. The only change I made was I increased this uh, variable here, which the size of that, that uh, contains the maximum path size. Okay, let's go into modules. We have a couple of modules here. Lua socket is used for the debugger. Zen mode is just uh, a style uh, module that removes the borders of the window. Okay, this is our open AI module. Let's look at main.cpp. Okay, a lot of code here, blah, blah, blah. Open AI, open AI, new image. Hmm, this is the function that our Lua script is calling. Interesting. Okay. Actually, actually, I'll show you something else. This is the actual function that the Lua script calls, and this gets all the arguments and verifies that they are what they're supposed to be. And then it calls this C++ function with all those arguments. So, same thing, but, um, okay, so what this is doing is this is initializing curl and it's setting all these settings. It's got the bearer token, which is for the authorization, which is, that's your API key. Okay. 
Let's set in all these options. Post fields, what's that? Post fields equals this JSON object. Okay, what is this JSON object? Let's create it here. We're using this in low man, Nick, I guess his name is Nick. Low man, uh, JSON, J3. Prompt, huh, remember that? The prompt from here and here. Well, here it is being passed to this curl request. So we construct that JSON object and then we turn it into a single string uh, called post fields and we're gonna send that in the curl request. Okay, curl easy perform. This is when you actually do the thing. And then we retrieve the, uh, the data. This is just a bunch of error checking. It's not really that complicated. Uh, down here, this is when the response is okay and we have an image URL to download. And now we create another curl object and we're gonna download that thing. There it is. Then we download the image into the path that the, the script actually specifies. Let's see, save path. So Lua itself will choose the save path. Um, where is that? Save path equals dir plus name. The directory is in this temporary folder. The name is just a random uh, universal uh, ID, so it'll always be unique. That saves the file. And that is how all of this works. Again, we're sending that prompt to the DLL. The DLL has already sent it to the server and we're waiting for the server to process it and, re and return uh, an image to us. And we get back our image. Not bad, not bad. I've actually seen some like concrete walls that look pretty similar to that. I like it. So, uh, that's a lot to take in. Um, this may not be the final end all be all AI texture generator, but you have complete open access to the source code for this. You can download it right now and compile it yourself. You can change this source code or you can integrate another AI system. There's some others out there. Um, this is a rapidly changing field. So, uh, you know, there might be something, something else that comes along that's a little bit better in six months. And the point is now we have a demonstration and an example of how to actually build functionality into the new editor using Lua extensions. I think this is so cool because uh, now you've got code that can interface with basically every web API out there. I mean, they all work pretty much the same. Um, they're all very, very similar to this with the curl request and uh, setting the authorization token. And so this will work, you can adapt this to work with Sketchfab, to work with like itch, uh, itch.io or CG Trader or anybody who has any kind of web API. This can be used to integrate with it. So the possibilities are endless and you have this wonderful open platform to develop on. Uh, so I think it's going to be really cool. I'm uh, very much looking forward to seeing what people create with this and uh, stop by the forum and ask for help if you're trying to do something interesting. And I will try to my best to support you with this.